Hey, I'm Pep, and this is the Pathfinder Adventure card game, A Rise of the Rune Lords base set. Now, if you've played Pathfinder or role-playing games before, this is basically taking that concept and turning it into something like a deck builder, and it's got some interesting stuff going on. If you've played before, awesome. What I'm going to do here is a playthrough of the whole game. Um, hopefully. And I'm going to let you make some of the choices about... Uh, how the characters are built and whatnot. Um, now, here are our options for characters. So I figure we go through them, and I'd like to run two characters for the entire thing, but if people really want me to run a third, um, you know, feel free to say uh, two is probably ideal and pretty easy to manage with one person. So uh, let's just go through these one at a time. So first we have Sajin who is a male human monk. And he's got a little bit of backstory. If you really want to read it, I won't stop you. You just pause it. Now, Sajin is a little heavy on blessings. He actually can't use weapons or spells right away. He could eventually upgrade into it. And he can never use armor. You always got to show off those abs. Now, on top of that, here are... Sajin's base stats. Now, Sajin has a couple of abilities. Um, one is that you can play any number of blessings on your combat check, because normally you can only play one. So he kind of lets you basically use your blessings as a way to, to boost your combat. And then whenever you attempt a combat check without playing a weapon, you can choose to use your dexterity die. So uh, using that instead of the strength die is pretty cool, and that can later get upgraded. Anyway, so that's one option. Next option, I'm kind of going through, uh, these are actually the character expansion characters, so I'll kind of go through them first. So there's a female gnome druid, Lenny, Lenny, and there's Lenny's backstory, if you really want to read it. And then, Lenny is very spell heavy, being a druid, um, some good blessings too. Eventually, Linny can use a little bit of everything if she wants. Here are Linny's base stats. And Linny's got a couple interesting abilities. One is if you play an ally with the animal trait, you can recharge it instead of discarding it. And if you reveal an ally with the animal trait, you can just add a plus one to your, or sorry, a 1d4 uh, to your check. On top of that, you can later upgrade it. And then you can also discard a card to roll a d10 instead of your strength score. So if you don't think you're going to win a combat and you don't have any animals with you, you can just kind of uh, shapeshift, wild shift, wild. Why can't I think of the name of that? It'll come to me. So wild shape, ha, ah, perfect. Um, keep going. Amiri, female human barbarian. There is Amiri's backstory. And... Amiri, weapons, lots of weapons. Look at that thing. Clearly, she enjoys weapons, and she's got quite a few blessings as well. She never, ever learns spells, though. Now, there's Amiri's base stats. That's significant. A d12 is very nice. Not a lot of characters have the d12s. And so you can bury a card from your hand, add 1d10 to your strength melee or constitution check. So not only could you use that in combat, you could use it for just random checks. Now, burying cards is dangerous, and it lowers your health during a particular game, but whatever. Uh, you may move at the end of your turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Um, it has to be somewhere, uh, or, or you can move another character, um, another character to your location when you end your turn if you upgrade her. Um, normally you have to move at the start of your turn, but being able to move at the end is, is really neat. You can kind of go and help and support people by pushing yourself around. You can avoid effects that normally would start at the start of your turn. It's neat. And the last of the expansion characters is... Ba -ba, Sila, female human paladin. There is Sila's backstory. And Sila has pretty overall stats. Again, no D12s. Um, 
Sila is really invested in finding the bad guys. So you can examine the top card of your location, and if it's a boon, which is a good thing, you put it on the bottom of the location. And it's not a may, unfortunately. It's may for the examine part, but if you find a boon, you have to get rid of it. You can also discard the top card of your deck to add a d6 to uh, a check. And then, uh, yeah, you can, you can upgrade that quite a bit. And if it was a blessing, you get to recharge it instead. So she has a lot of blessings and a decent amount of weapons and armor. So it's a nice balance between a, a spellcaster, well, sort of one spell, but spellcasting and fighting. Uh, yeah. Um, while we're talking about healers, we'll go with uh, Kyra, female cleric, female human cleric of Serenae, Sararara. Uh, so, there is Kyra's backstory. Get it unblurry for you. Oh, might just never happen. There you go. And then, we'll look at Sira's, uh, Kyra, Sira, Kyra's stats. Ah, again, look at that, D12 in Wisdom. So, very, very wise. And when it comes to, uh, a good bit of spells, lots of blessings. Now, the special ability is very important. One, you can add a d8 with the magic trait to your check to defeat undead banes. That would also include traps that happen to have the undead type, which is very neat. Um, and then, instead of your first exploration on a turn, you can reveal a card with the divine trait, heal somebody, then discard the card you revealed. Um, heal somebody being that you shuffle some of their cards from the discard pile back in their deck, so helping to keep people alive. Whew. Oh, there's still so many left. There is Sione, female human sorcerer. There is Sione's backstory. Sione, obviously, spells, but also quite a few allies and blessings. She has a lot of people helping her out. And would you look at that? Another D12, this time in Charisma, which is her primary stat for combat with spells and whatnot. Also has a pretty large hand size. So for your combat check, you can discard a card to roll your arcane die plus 1d6 with the attack, fire, and magic traits. It counts as playing a spell. So even if you don't have a spell in hand, she can basically act as if she does. And then you automatically succeed at your check to recharge a spell with the arcane trait. Normally people have to make a check. She does not. It just automatically happens. While we're looking at spellcasters, let's look at Ezrin, the male human wizard. There is Ezrin's backstory. Ta-da! And Ezrin, of course, has oh so many spells. He's, he's almost all spells. That's crazy. Um, he can never have blessings, though. I think he forsook the gods. Probably won't get armor anytime soon, either. Now, Ezrin also has a d12. Maybe I lied. Maybe every, almost everybody has a d12. Um, after you play a spell with the arcane trait, you can look at the top card of your deck. If it's a spell, you can put it in your hand. So, kind of keeps getting to recharge the spells. And considering the fact that more than half of your deck is spells, that'll probably go off a lot. Also, if you acquire a card with the magic trait during exploration, you can immediately explore again. And then lastly, you can upgrade him to add to your checks to recharge cards. So he doesn't automatically recharge like the other girl did. But still, now let's look at uh, sort of a spellcaster with Lem, male halfling bard. There is Lem's backstory. Well, a lot of people have backstories, but how come no one has front stories, you know? I guess that would be tales of their future. So Lem gets a little bit of everything, doesn't get any armor though, uh, eventually might get some. Uh, but he has a decent amount of spells, gets a weapon, a couple allies, blessings. And he does not have a d12 in anything. He's kind of supposed to be like a jack of all trades, like a bard would be, so a lot of average stats. Now, once per check, you can recharge a card to add 1d4 to a check attempted by another character at your location. So, uh, you can also later upgrade that, of course. So, he's very helpful for other people, not quite as helpful for himself. Uh, at the start of your turn, you can exchange one card from your hand with one card of the same type in your discard pile. 
So if you happen to have a spell that you've already discarded because you didn't recharge it, you could just trade a spell from your hand for the other one that you want. Now let's look at Merciel, female elf rogue. There is Merciel's backstory. Now Merciel, ta-da! Yeah, got a, a little bit of a few things, but really likes those items. Items seem to be Merciel's thing. Uh, Merciel has a D12 in dexterity and quite a few different abilities based on that. Um, this is a very important one. You may evade your encounter. So anytime Mirasil encounters something, she can just say, no, nope, I don't want to encounter that. It does kind of waste your turn, but it gets you out of situations where you would absolutely just die. Now, if you are the only character at your location, you can recharge a card to add one D6 to your combat check or discard to add another D6 on top of that. So. Anytime you're fighting alone, you can potentially just give yourself 2d6. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go with Harsk next. Harsk is a male dwarf ranger. There is Harsk's backstory. And let's take a look. Harsk has a lot of weapons, a reasonable amount of blessings too. Kind of makes sense for a ranger. Probably has a few allies. Oh, no, only one ally. Oh. People don't like them, I guess. Uh, constitution is high. Now, Constitution doesn't really play into combat usually, so maybe not as good of a stat to have higher, but that's fine. Uh, at the end of your turn, you can examine the top card of your location deck. So, similar to the Paladin, Sila, but instead you just look at it. So you can kind of decide later whether you want to encounter it or you can just tell people what it is. Um, and you can recharge a card to add 1d4 to a combat check at another location. So almost kind of the opposite of the halfling, Lem, you help people at other locations. So you want to stay split up from your party. I guess you're uh, pew pew shooting people. Well, not with a gun, but with a bow. Yeah, that's Harsk. Now we have Valoros, male human fighter. There is Valoros's backstory. And let's take a look. I'm going to guess Valoros has weapons. Yeah, lots of weapons and then just kind of average of everything else, except, of course, no spells. He's not that kind of fighter. Now, he doesn't have a D12. He only has a D10 in combat. Um, and just kind of a lot of average stats after that. Um, nice thing is he's proficient with everything. I haven't really talked about proficiencies before, but that's fine. And you can add 1D4 to another character's combat check at your location. So, kind of like Lem... He likes to help people out. And also, when you play a weapon, you recharge it instead of discarding it. Well, you may. So normally, if something has a discard ability, you actually recharge it. And with the amount of weapons that Valoros has, it's probably going to be pretty easy. Now, there are lots of characters to choose from, and I'm going to do this the easy way. That being, I'm not going to have to choose at all, because I'm going to make you choose for me. So I'm going to lay the characters here out to give you one final look. And I do suggest, um, you know, if you, if you like the role-playing aspect, look at the backstories. I might work some of that into the, the game and role-play it a little while we're playing. But, uh, you know, look at the abilities, see what you think is interesting. Uh, try to make a balanced party so that the game's a little easier for me. Or try to do the opposite and make the worst possible party to watch me struggle uncontrollably. Uh, your choice. Uh, obviously, I would prefer the uh, easier game, or at least a medium game. Um, one thing to think about if you're trying to make the game easy for me is you probably want to make sure that I have characters that can use every type of card. If I can never use armor, any cool armor I see is wasted. And if you want to make the game really difficult for me, pick two people that do the exact same thing and then <laughs> watch me flounder. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. So in the comments, leave, let's just say, uh, your top three characters. The three characters that, that you're most interested in, in order. And uh, I'll add them up. Maybe I'll give the first choice three points, the second choice two points, the third choice one point, or something like that. And then I'll add them all up based on the comments and uh, do whatever people suggest. And just so you know, I'm going to run through the adventure like this, uh, have it all set up and, and go through it. And at the end of each adventure, 
with any extra loot I've got, I'll let you pick what loot the characters keep as well. So it gives you something to do other than just watching. You can be interactive and, and you can have a little bit of choice in the strategy that's used. So yeah, perfect. Again, leave your character choices in the comments. Uh, let me know any, any suggestions you have as well. And thanks for watching. I, I really can't wait to start this. Uh, I'll give it a couple days for people to see this and, and add some comments. So uh, hope to hear from you and live free, game hard. Yeah.